Hello there everyone, uh, this is me again with another video. Uh, excuse me if I do sound a little phlegmy, and that's because uh, I just got done eating breakfast and let me turn this down a wee bit. And I noticed that, uh, you know, whilst uh, re-watching some of Goontick's old videos, uh, that's a shout out by the way, the Goontick, go ahead and check him out. He's wonderful. Uh, doesn't make videos that often, but uh, still, a real cool cat. Anyway, he made a video in which he, uh, I suppose he showcases all the various uh, toys that have been of paramount importance to him in his childhood. And I had commented on his video saying that I would also do the same but that was about seven months ago and I haven't done it yet but now I'm gonna do it so let's go ahead and uh, get the first toy up here all right so first of all this isn't uh, one I had as a child but this is you know just uh, kind of an idea but uh, I'd always have one of these here this is a you can see it's a little cracked on the side there I don't know how that happened but it's a matryoshka or a Russian nesting doll uh, well, you know if you don't know they come apart in uh, in segments and uh, you know there's various uh, there's all sorts of different types of uh, people inside of people inside of people. It's a very almost horrific Lovecraftian concept. But uh, I've always had one of these when I was a child. I, they were great fun. Um, and this was about when I was, I don't know, maybe three, four, I can't remember. But uh, I would always have one of these. But I remember there was this one pair, or one set, that was like quite um, pear-shaped, and uh, you know, there was sort of sparkling pink accents on it. But uh, this is the only one I have uh, as of now, so there's that. Alright, next, uh, you've seen this before, uh, it's the bug out bulb uh, which is essentially god is that too loud I really hope that that's not too loud because uh, I did a test of this earlier and uh, I want to be able I want you to be able to hear me and the music so anyway this is the bug out bob here it's basically a stress to uh, stress doll you can see it's very much inflated Deflated, I mean. Look at that, Jesus. I mean, you could just wad that up and, uh... Oh, there's a hole in there, I think. Oh, yeah, that's why there's a hole in there. Look at that. But, uh... I would always have one of these. I think this is like my third or fourth or fifth one. I can't remember. But, uh... I'm saying I can't remember quite a lot. But this is my fourth or fifth one. But... I believe the main reason why I had one of these was because it featured in Jurassic Park uh, when, you know, Nedry was by his computer and, and biting on it. And also just because it looks so weird looking. And uh, this thing here, I assume that it's anus, but I don't know. Anyway, I think I'm due for a new one because I could just wad this up and... Uh, yeah. Right. Next, we have uh, <clears throat> we have here. I'm, I'm I'm debating what to show next. I really am. But uh, oh hell, we'll just do this. Uh, we have a little wily e. coyote. This actually was required uh, or acquired acquired um, about two or three years ago. But, uh, actually, I've seen it uh, in my grandfather's, uh, I guess, 
collection or whatever in his house. He really liked Wiley e Coyote when he was uh, he was young, and I liked him as well. And I always wanted the one that he had, which was basically this one. But Mum wouldn't let me have it because it smelled of mildew and all of that. And we tried washing it, and uh, we just tossed it. So I bought my own uh, when I became a uh, grown man. So now it's here. So I've done a video on all my wily stuff. So you can go ahead and see that if you want. But anyway, that's that. All right, next year. <clears throat> I feel like I'm shouting. Probably not, but anyway. Uh, next year is uh, back in, I suppose, maybe 2007 through 2000 and, oh, I'd say 13, 14 maybe. I had this cousin, or I still have this cousin, <laughs> who was real obsessed with Nintendo and everything they put out, you know, Mario Brothers, uh, Kirby, uh, oh god, what else was there? A whole bunch of other stuff. And uh, me, uh, you know, I was sort of his age at the time, and I wanted to sort of appeal to him a bit. So... I would basically sort of, uh, you know, uh, take on, you know, uh, sort of, uh, you know, play the games and everything and uh, and all that, and collect figures as well. Uh, one of the primary examples is the Mario Kart 64 figures made by Toy Biz. I only have one that survived, and it's the Luigi. Uh, you can see that there. It's a little worn, uh, I suppose. I don't know if you can see that, but it's worn on the moustache slightly and the nose. There's that one mark there, and it's kind of dirty. But, uh, and its arm is sort of like, woo, like that, you know, <laughs> very loose and, and such. But, uh, the reason why I like these is because they were always the most poseable of the lot. Uh, you know, they had about seven points of articulation. You could move the head. They had ball-jointed arms, so you could, you know, raise them up and, you know, sort of do like, you know, what's going on here, that pose. You could rotate their wrists and, uh, you know, move their legs and such with the carts that they came with. I don't have any of the carts, those were always prone to break, but I always ad just adored the figures so much. Uh, my favorite was the Yoshi, or Yoshi, however you say it. But uh, that Yoshi, unfortunately, is, was the easiest, to br was the most fragile, and therefore broke the easiest. And this is Miss Luigi here is the only one I had. My cousin, oddly enough, didn't have that many figures. <laughs> I had more than he did. <laughs> I had a whole damn Mario collection that took up. Oh, you haven't seen the inside of this closet? But it took up one of these shelves, maybe two, even three of these shelves inside of this closet. All of them are lost, most likely. Except for this one. But yeah. Anyway. Next here we have... You've seen this before. It's uh, Reyes. Or Reyes. But Reyes, whoever it is. Uh, from Return of the Jedi. <coughs> the line in 1983. <coughs> and basically... This was my first vintage Star Wars figure, because at the time, I was real into uh, J.T. Mitchell 87, uh, this was around 2010, and uh, if you don't know who he is, go ahead and uh, look at his channel, he's basically a toy reviewer, I used to be into action figure reviews when I was uh, 9 and 10 and 11 and such, and you know. 
all that. But uh, I saw that he collected a whole bunch of different stuff. And I just generally like his personality. And I saw this in an antique shop. I forget where. But in an antique shop. And... Uh, thought, hey, this would be my first vintage Star Wars figure. And uh, I bought it. It was an exorbitant amount of money. But nonetheless, I bought it. I actually have two of these things. This is the one that's in better condition. I forget what I did with the other one. I don't even know where it is. But uh, this was sort of uh, the seed that planted my impetus for collecting toys. I don't collect toys any longer because I've since grown out of it. I more I now collect books because I'm a writer and such. And I'm actually getting rid of quite a lot of books, but that's another video for another time. So, as Ria said, it was just so weird looking that look at that, just a three-eyed goat creature. You can't resist that. Anyway. This next one here is kind of a stand-in for something that I have but I couldn't find. I looked everywhere for it but I couldn't find it in time for this video. This is a stripe pop. This is representing that one stripe plush from Gremlins that I showed to you in a snack and a story in which I described uh, you know I had a I had a YouTube channel which was it wasn't even a YouTube channel, it was like the videos were loaded up onto my hard drive on a laptop, a very old laptop, which has now since been destroyed, and all those videos were lost. And it used to be called the, the account was called StripeFan57. Except it wasn't actually a YouTube account. I kept the plush for several years. I still have it. I just can't find it. But it does have that value to me. It, it sort of reminds me of a of a time gone by, you know, like, you know, what sort of equated to my becoming a YouTuber now. So, that's that. I guess I'll do two here. Next is, uh, these are kind of more recent toys, but uh, nonetheless, uh, they're here. This is an R2, D2, and a little plasticine Garfield uh, here. Uh, I got this, this R2 from, uh, oh hell, I forget, somebody or other that Mum and I were picking up stuff from to put into her shop, and uh, he said that it meant a lot to him, and... Uh, he gave it to me, and I still have it. And this was about maybe two or three years ago, I forget when, but, uh, yeah. This Garfield here. I did not make this Garfield. I actually <laughs> saw it at a rummage sale, and uh, thought it so cool and neat that I asked how much it was. And... Uh, Basically, the vendor said, just take it. So I did. I took it. And uh, I painted it up, as you can see. Uh, it was a, sort of a darker orange. But I repainted it because it was a little scuffed up. But uh, I used to carry this around with me pretty much every day of high school. <laughs> so that's that there. All right, uh, this video is getting a wee bit long, so the last two toys. This here, you've seen this before. Uh, you've seen probably a lot of these things before, but uh, this one here especially, and that is this. This is the Alf puppet, the talking Alf puppet from 2002, when. Alf had his, I suppose, 25th anniversary, and uh, this was uh, the first Alf item that I ever received, and I, it's a bit too big for my hand now, but, you know, it would talk and such if you press its tongue, and 
What the hell? I guess it doesn't. I guess it doesn't work that well anymore because you can hear. It would just say here, kitty, kitty, and all other things, but it's just saying. I guess the voice box is dying on this, or I don't know if this has batteries, but we'll have to look into that. Anyway. Obviously, I have a whole big elf collection, and that was the first piece in it, so. Next. Okay, the last toy here. I have had since I was in an amoeble stasis. Now, if you don't know what that means, I've had it since I was a baby. Uh, and it has stuck with me all these years, up until today. And I still sleep with it <laughs> tonight, or, you know, at nights and such. I'm not ashamed of it, because, you know, it's been with me all these years. But uh, here it is. This is Teddy. Right here, he's a little dirty, and his nose is sort of wearing away because of all the washing we, he's been through. But uh, I've just had him since, uh, like I said, as Guntik would say, since I was a fetus. <laughs> and uh, I've slept with him. For all these years and still continue to. I also used to have a dog, uh, you know, that went along with this. That has since been lost. I don't quite know where it is, but uh, I still have this little, this little uh, sucker right here. So, anyway, that was the toys that made, or those were the toys that made me, uh, you know, maybe let me know in the comment section down below, or make your own video showing the toys that made you, because uh, I'd be curious to see. And, uh, yeah, uh, I suppose I will see you sometime or other, but uh, have a good day, and, uh, yeah, I'm signing off. Oh, yes, there's a little addendum, I suppose. I do have one more toy, and it's this. As you can see here, that is a Velociraptor encased in a water-filled chamber. So you can shake around, and it's on, uh, you know, it's all jointed, and it's on uh, little sticks and such. I don't know when I got this, but I've had it for as long as I can remember. Uh, it says 2007. Right there, I don't know if you can read it, but it says 2007. So I assume I had it sometime then. Maybe earlier, I don't know. But that's all. I just thought I'd add that on there. <laughs>